Hey, good morning. I hope you're having an awesome day. <laughs> Welcome to the Unk Rise show from beautiful Southside Muncie, Indiana. Um, I am just now calling up uh, a, a check on my live stream right now, and I hope that all is going well. Um, I uh, was um, trying to monitor my show today to see what I'm getting quality-wise, and uh, one of the reasons I'm doing that is because I actually had some uh, glitches here, and I want to make sure that things are working well. Let's see. What do we got here? Um, I think that we are doing okay, but uh, let me uh, just check here. I'm actually monitoring this stream from this laptop right here. Right? See, there I am. Okay, well, it's working now, isn't it? So, um, anyways, uh, all good there. And um, I, uh, um, so yeah, I apologize if I seem a little off my game when I first uh, clicked over here this morning. Um, but let's talk about a few things. Got all kinds of good things uh, going on. Um, very busy day, very busy week. So, first of all, let's talk about this laptop. What is this? All right. So, you know, the uh, laptops, uh, you know, they're not that interesting anymore. Um, the, uh, you know, they're pretty run-of-the-mill kind of thing. Uh, this one, um, I bought off Amazon. I bought it for $40. Um, and I, it is a used, reconditioned laptop. It was once a Chromebook. And as you can see, I have this sticker on the back here. That sticker on the back is to cover up the Chrome icon because this is no longer a Chromebook. This is a Linux Mint book. Um, if you take one of these apart, you take a right protect, protect, can't talk today, screw off of the motherboard, and you flash the ROM, and you reboot and remove everything and reinstall, you can put Linux on one of these, and that is indeed what I have here. And it makes it kind of cool because... Um, the uh, the Chrome OS has a limited service life. After a while, they expire it so that you will have to buy a new laptop. But if you put Linux on them, they will last forever. So that's what I did. And uh, it was kind of an experiment. Um, one other thing to note, on the back of this, you see <laughs> that there are Velcro strips. The reason is because I uh, hooked this on my exercise bike handles when I'm working out. And I have uh, the other piece, the Velcro on the on the handles, the grip part. And so I just stick that on the handles when I'm working out. I can uh, watch videos and uh, enjoy. So, uh, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. So, all right, so we got that going on. And uh, a lot else. Um, I got a little cooker here I got from Goodwill. We might test that out here in a little bit. Um, I've been doing some work with uh, Plaster of Paris, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well, and some things uh, we can show you this week, and I have some ideas for next week too, so I will, uh, I'll get to those ideas for next week here in just a little bit. Um, let me go ahead and switch over to the forecast here, and my desk is very crowded today, so I have to kind of maneuver things around here a bit, get it all all situated. Um, so anyways, let's see what we have going on weather wise on the 10 day we have. What do we got? Oh, oh, look here. All right. This is some uncry weather uh, for this time of year. Uh, drop out of the 110 ballpark that we had this past week. Um, we are down to high of 65 today. Mostly cloudy. Woohoo. Um, then we have, uh, next up, we have 67 Monday, 73 Tuesday, 76 and 68 midweek, and thunderstorms and showers. Okay, then we move on to a bit of partly cloudy, and, um, and then uh, partly cloudy all through the weekend, but boy, we are creeping back up. It's 80s in, through Saturday and Sunday. Mm. Okay, well, that's not great, but I will say on the whole... Uh, not a bad forecast. Uh, I can definitely uh, work with that. A very nice day today, I might add. So 65, I might even mow my yard today. I don't know. So whoops. Hold on a second. What did I do? Always got something going on. You know what I need? I need a show producer. I need somebody to run the show while I do the talking. Um, <laughs> and I have found this to be true at other things that I stream as well. I need a producer to run things. Um, but that's okay. Um, we can... Uh, 
uh, we can forge on ahead. I just um, sometimes a little distracted while I'm uh, fooling with uh, various knobs and volume controls and things like that. So, anyways, uh, so we got that going on. Um, next thing up that I want to take a look at here is I want to look at what we have going on with graduation 2022. Um, let me get this into full screen mode here. And there we go. All righty. So let's have a look at graduation 2022. That sounds like a, that always sounds like it's way off in the future to me. So anyways, let's have a look at some pictures. Uh, my nephew Liam graduated. Very exciting. Uh, we also had a graduation over at uh, Anderson Preparatory Academy. Um, I uh, streamed that, I'm proud to say, and that was a good time. Um, and then, uh, lo and behold, if we don't have another graduation coming up in just a couple weeks, we have the high school graduation. So it is the time of year for graduations. But let's have a look at a few, uh, few pictures from Liam's big event right here. So there we go. Graduation 2022. Let's have a look. There we go. Oh, you know what? What am I doing? I uh, I put <laughs> I got my got my video covering up Liam's picture. Well, well. All right. I guess I did, that's a fail on my part and covering up that nice picture of Liam. But um, anyways, uh, uh, very nice pictures. You can see that he was dressed in um, his uh, uh, white graduation gown and mortarboard cap. Um, very good, along with tassel on the side. Had the full works. Here we go. What else we got here? Now, at least I'm not cutting anybody off in this picture. There's Liam with his mom and dad. Very nice pictures there. Uh, that is post-graduation. He is officially a graduate at the point we're taking these pictures. And there we go. After graduation, I got to have a little look at some artwork that he created. I really like that a lot. That's a uh, a picture of himself, I do believe, there that he's holding and some things that he likes. I see Legos and football and some other things like that. And then, of course, the class of 2022 glasses. How cool is that? So, uh, And with apologies for cutting, uh, cutting Liam off <laughs> on the picture, I did not mean to have my picture superimposed on top of Liam's picture, so my apologies for that. Um, but... Um, Anyways, uh, uh, very nice, and we have a little uh, video as well, so let's see him. Uh, this is a quick one, but just see, see him uh, walking across the stage, so here we go. So big congrats are in order. Very nice job. Very good. Okay. So next thing up, I went ahead and um, looked at um, a, uh, a work on the plaster of Paris a little bit. So, um, And um, I thought that it would be fun to see what you could do with that. I bought a box of that on a whim. Um, I bought this thing, too, we'll talk about here in a minute. I'm going to make some delicious cupcakes. Um but um, anyways, uh, so I got some plaster of Paris when I was at the store yesterday, and I was like, basically my recollection of this was, I think that that's something cool. Um, that's about how much I remembered. It seemed like I did something with it back in school a long time ago. Uh, so I um, thought, well, hey, you know, let's, uh, let's grab some and see what we can do. So I get back home. And um, and it's just a box of dry, uh, you know, the the stuff that you mix it up with, the, the powder. And I was like, well, what are you going to do with that? Because um, you can't really, you can kind of mold it, but it's not like clay exactly and stuff. And so I found a bunch of videos of people pouring it into molds. And I didn't really have any of those, but I found out that what you can do is you can use Play-Doh. And so you can press something in Play-Doh. And then you can take that and you can... Um, you can take that and then pour a plaster of Paris in it, let it set up, and then you t pull the Play-Doh away, and you have a cast of, you know, whatever you made. Um, well, I didn't have any Play-Doh, and I didn't have the supplies to make Play-Doh. So um, I was like, well. So then I found a guy who um, used a rubber glove to make a hand mold, and he put it inside this big glass jar and then stretched the glove over it and poured plaster of Paris in it and let it set up overnight. 
Um, I didn't have a container to do that with exactly, but I did have some rubber gloves. And um, so I had those, and I thought, you know, let's see what happens. So I did that. I haven't checked it yet, but so what we have here, this is, <laughs> there's a big hand in there. That's a plaster of Paris hand. Now I put, I stretched a, a rubber glove over this. All right. And I taped it on there and I filled it with plaster of Paris. And I'm trying not to get this in my cup. I, I read online, I actually saw a website that said that, um, that uh, it's, it, it could cause intestinal blockage if consumed in large quantities. So I'm like thinking, somebody going to be eating a lot of plaster of Paris? I can understand maybe flicking a little piece in your coffee cup, but uh, if you're like eating a lot of it, enough to cause an intestinal blockage, my goodness. Anyways, uh, don't, don't if you eat pl if you eat plaster of Paris, don't eat a lot. Um, matter of fact, my what I'm recommending is don't eat it at all. Um, so. So please don't eat plaster of Paris. Um, so anyways, I got this, right? So I filled this up with plaster of Paris. Now, the, the thumb is a little smushed, I think, but uh, we can work with that. So in theory, I take the rubber off here, and then I would be left with just the plaster. And it looks like it worked. Hopefully it's set up long enough. I don't know. Uh, it was overnight, so I think that that would be long enough. Lordy. Okay. <laughs> oh no! My thumb! Thumb came undone. Goodness sakes, this is hard to get this stuff off there. Might have to glue my thumb. All right. <laughs> well, that's not going quite as smoothly as I thought it would. We're getting it. Other than a broken thumb that I can glue, I guess. Be in good shape. Almost good shape. Goodness, that's kind of hard to get that off there. <laughs> I got a little piece stuck still, I think. But yeah. Um. So that worked. I, I think you might want to something this thick. You might want to let it sit for a couple of days in the oven or something to really get it done all the way. Or not set in the oven, I'm sorry, set on the counter for a few days. I was also in my back of my mind thinking maybe you want to throw it in the oven, but uh, I'm not sure if that's the way to do things or not. So, um, <laughs> so anyways, so there you go. If you fill a rubber glove up with plaster of Paris, um, you can make a nice hand sculpture. Uh, this would be suitable for painting. You could, uh, uh, I suppose you could like paint it for Thanksgiving, like paint it like a turkey. You know how you do those hand things? You could, like paint a little turkey turkey face over here on the side. And so make, make hand, give those as gifts at Thanksgiving. Uh, so, you know, I like it. I like it. So um, I think that uh, a little, if I dampen down the part where the thumb, uh, Got a little crack there on the thumb. If I if I dampen that down a little bit um, and then stick it back together and let it continue to dry, I think I think we'd still uh, I think it'd be totally workable. Also, I got just a little bit of rubber on here. I'd have I need to cut off or something. So it seemed like it's stuck on there pretty good. But uh, uh, still, all things considered, yes, it works. So I got a beautiful hand sculpture right here, um, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll paint it and give it to my mom for a gift. I think that she might like that. So. Um, and, uh, maybe if you make one, you can do that for your mom. Um, so anyways, let's talk about how you make stuff with plaster of Paris though. Um, if you do something a little thinner and more reasonable, it has a, a cure time of like 20 minutes or so. So I don't know if it'll work exactly, but let's uh, see what we got. So I'm going to set this aside right there. Okay. There we go. Okay. That is set aside and I'll move this out of the way. All right. So what is plaster of Paris? That's a good question. I don't know what it is. It's a, uh, um, but um, I don't know what it's made out of exactly. But it's uh, it's like uh, sort of like cement, I guess you, um, or plaster is the name. You know, it's named plaster. So, um, so anyways, it comes in a box like this, a big four pound box. You get these big giant bags like this, right? And you can take these bags, 
and you mix them with water and you mix it up um, and you mix it up uh, basically two parts plaster one part water more or less okay and what I have here is I have a cookie cutter of a present and I have a tea light candle and what we're going to do is put aluminum foil on the bottom put the candle inside the cookie cutter thing we're going to mix up a little bit of plaster of Paris and pour it in there we're going to make a, a cookie cutter uh, candle holder right so uh, let's give that a try and then I'm going to make my cupcake thingies here and uh, maybe if I get lucky uh, it will all come you know it'll basically uh, set up while I'm making the cupcakes and then we can uh, see what we got so let's go ahead take a piece of foil here okay and toss that there okay so on this piece of foil we're going to flatten it down a little bit and we are going to take the cookie cutter so you want to get that a little closer to the actual size of the cookie cutter. About like that will work. Put on the smooth side up. Okay, and then we're going to try to form fit it a little bit here. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's the inside that we're concerned with. But nonetheless, so get it about like that. So I did that. Okay. Now... I talk about this very uh, definitively, like I know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, so I, it might not work. But anyways, we're going to take the candle, put the candle down inside there, about like that. Then we're going to fill up around the candle with the plaster of Paris. So let's mix some of that up. Take <coughs> this. And I still have a cough, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I kind of have had that for a couple days, and uh, I don't know. I um, throat's been really dry and stuff, and... Uh, Anyways, um, so I was coughing. It was. Uh, I hope it. I feel like it might have interfered with the quality of my video last night. Uh, speaking of which, I have found that one of my callers um, does not uh, like the electric guitar as much as the acoustic guitar. So, I'll try to go back to more acoustic guitar in the future. Sorry, I'm making a big chore out of this. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, electric was too loud. But I say if it's too loud, you're too old. So, but nonetheless, so we put in, um, so we want two parts to one, and I don't need a ton, so I put in one scoop of this, I'll put in a half a scoop, of, or a half a thing of water here, and I'll try not to spill that, and I won't eat it. Okay, so I'm going to take, and I filled up a full thing of this with plaster, I'm going to do a half a thing of water, right, so about a two to one ratio. Mixed, uh, mix it to suit yourself, whatever uh, looks about right to you. But uh, most of what I read online was about that. And that's pretty consistent with what the uh, instructions say, too. So I think we're good there. Uh, <coughs> no particular smell to this stuff or anything. So that's good. Okay. And as you can see... Just mixing it up real nice here. Do not pour this down your drain. <laughs> Excuse me. That was another thing I read online. <laughs> it said that that would be a bad thing, and it would be a bad thing. So, okay, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to actually take the candle out for a moment. I'm going to put this stuff in. I'm going to try to get that in there about right. Yeah, Okay. Okay, let me see how I'm looking with the candle here. I, I want to put it so that there's enough, but not so much the candle's completely floating in it or, you know, hidden by it, so to speak. Well, I think that looks nice. Okay, let me see if I can show you. I don't know if I can show you very easily on this part. Okay, let's see. So, there we go. Candle holder uh, in process, all right? And so it is 9.21. Um, here at the end of the show, maybe it'll be ready. I don't know, though. We'll see. Uh, it didn't set up as fast as advertised. It said 20 or 30 minutes when I looked at it uh, before. I don't think it was quite, um, I don't think we quite made that with the big giant hand. But then again, you know, that's a big sculpture. But anyways, this stuff is paintable. 
Um, so you can make these things. And then next week, I'm going to get it out again because there's something else I want to do. Uh, next week is when you actually, uh, we're going to uh, make impressions with this in Play-Doh. You know, like you can take and uh, take like an action figure or something like that and smash it in your Play-Doh and then pull it out real gently and make a mold. And then pour the plaster of Paris in that and let it set up. And then you can pop that out and then you'll have a plaster uh, version of whatever you pushed into the Play-Doh. Now that sounds really cool to me. Um, but, uh, I was already, um, I had just bought this stuff last night for the show and realized that there was a lot more that could be done with it, um, than what I realized. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, set that aside and set this aside and clean off my desk a little bit here, put all this stuff aside. Okay. And get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to plug in my next item here, and then I'm going to clean my desk off while it's heating up. This I got from Goodwill yesterday. It is a um, mini cupcake maker. Okay, So on the inside of that, we have the ability to make mini cupcakes. And um, I thought, you know what? Let's give it a try. Let's see if it works. Also, I just noticed that I have stuff all over the sleeve of my shirt. So let me plug that in, get heating that up. All righty. So that is now heating up. And we'll see if I can make some little mini cupcakes. Okay. And get all this plaster cleaned up so I don't uh, have that in my cupcakes. I don't want, don't want to eat plaster. But yeah, this stuff's kind of fun though. Uh, like I said, I, I, my hand—I feel very proud of that. I think the candle holder will be even better. And then uh, I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'll give those away for gifts uh, soon. I don't know. So I think people like homemade gifts, and I think they really like plaster of Paris candle holder. Just thinking that I'm gonna throw that over there. Okay. And uh, Diesel was looking at me like, "What are you doing that for?" Um, the hat that I've got on today, I'd like to point out uh, that it is the one, I mentioned it last night on my uh, living room concert video too, but uh, this hat, I looked for it everywhere, everywhere, and I uh, could not find it. And I was doing some um, adjustment to the vents for air circulation in my house, and I found it jammed way back in the corner underneath my bed over to the side completely hidden away and I don't know how that ever happened but I am so glad that I found it again so that makes my day Let's see how this thing's doing oh boy it's nice and hot okay um I might need what am I doing touching it there I was burn my finger I was thinking if it's hot yeah it's hot I'll have to be careful so I got some delicious cake mix over here and I but I didn't get a plate I don't know what am I gonna do hmm okay well oh Nice piece of foil should do fine. Okay. Now let's put this cupcake maker to the test. And we will, I don't know how to use it exactly, but let's see what we got here. Um, but I'm really optimistic and I'm really hopeful today because I would love to have a delicious cupcake or two to eat. So let's give this a try. I think we just pour the batter in. And wouldn't you know it, I just happen to have a nice big thing of batter right here. Um, so this is chocolate fudge cake batter. And this is our cooker. And it's definitely nice and toasty hot. Matter of fact, it's uh, extraordinarily hot. Um, I think you pour this in. I don't have any instructions since it was from Goodwill. But I think you pour this stuff in here. And it goes to town just to cooking away here. Oh, so let's see what we got. I feel like way too much is coming out here. Okay, hold on. Hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know if this is going to work. I think I might be putting in too much. But we're going to see. Is that too much? I don't know.
This will be. If this works, then every day I can bring a thing of cake batter over to my desk while I'm drinking my coffee, make some nice little cupcakes. All right. So we got that in there. Now, I'm going to close the lid. And I think that they cook for <coughs> a few minutes. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to keep coughing into the microphone. I'm trying to avoid that. I um, the, the smoke machine probably also has something to do with that. I'm very dedicated to running my fog machine for my living room shows, but I do think it makes me cough a little bit. Um, I'm going to grab the icing and a plate. If you could be so kind as to wait for just a moment, I'll be right back. You can uh, look at the... Uh, at the uh, cooker cook if uh, anything happens so i'll come running over immediately but i'm gonna go get my icing and a plate because i'm very optimistic that they're gonna turn out well All right, I'm back with a plate and some icing. I'm ready to dig in. Let's hope we have a good result here today. I don't know, though. We'll see. <clears throat> okay, well, if nothing else, I can just eat the icing, I guess. So I got chocolate fudge icing right here. And how long should these cook, do you think? I don't know. What? Not quite ready yet. <laughs> they do smell good, though. Uh, Diesel, I hear him. Now, he can't have chocolate. I don't know if you know this or not, but dogs cannot have chocolate. Um, so I'm afraid he's out on this one. But um, he's he's looking. He's like, man, what are you cooking over there? So, um, But nothing for Diesel today. So uh, <laughs> we'll uh, get him next time. Now, but on the show, I did make some... Uh, dog treats for him and uh, you know so there is that um, and he did like those so let's see what we got here you know not bad not bad I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get him out of there um, I you I think that the idea is that you're supposed to use um, you know paper uh, cupcake uh, little mini cupcake paper things um, <laughs> so maybe my bad on that one but um that's okay. Well, I think we can manage. I think we can manage. Um, and um, if it works, then I'll recommend that you run to Goodwill and get an interesting item for uh, cooking things with as well. So there are a lot of good, interesting items for cooking at Goodwill. It is often a place where uh, appliances that seem like good ideas but are not actually ever used for anything end up. Um, and so <laughs> I think that's, this would fall in that category as... Great idea, good for nothing, and not actually used ever. This may be the first time it's ever been used, um, ever. I mean, <laughs> it was maybe because it looked brand new at Goodwill, I'm just saying. So, um, but got a purple shirt at Goodwill last night, too. Um, I, uh, um, nice, also brand new, it looked like. So, it's you can get some really good stuff there, you really can. So, uh, it's always, always fun. I was looking for some old electronics and things like that that maybe we could uh, work on on the show, but I didn't really find anything of great interest, so um, at least not yet. So I'll keep looking. All right, let's see if we can get one of these bad boys out of here and eat it. Let's see. Very delicate operation here. Look at that. Oh, it's not cooked all the way, though. <laughs> Hold on. Oops. <laughs> All right, so we'll give it just another minute. <laughs> that was still uh, still not cooked on the inside, so I don't know if that's um uh, needs to be uh, uh, go for another minute or two or uh, or what, but um that's the way it goes. So, anyways, um, what else is going on this week? Well, let's see. Let me think. This is a somewhat uneventful week, but I will say while I'm uh, killing some time here. This is Nate's last week uh, of school coming up, so he's out of school on the um, on the uh, let's see on the with well, the end of next week. Sorry, I'm um, so I'm gonna look best part time jobs for teens time jobs for teens. Okay, because Nate is going to get a job this summer, 
And uh, let's see what the best jobs are. Uh, 20 best jobs for teens. Let's see what we can get for uh, for jobs for Nathan here while we're waiting for these to cook. Here we go. All right. Best jobs for teens. Uh, wait, <laughs> cupcake making. <laughs> that would be a good job. Um, so fast food attendant. Um, primary duties. Uh, work in a fast food environment. Car wash attendant. I gotta say, car wash attendant sounds a lot better to me than a than a fast food attendant. Kennel assistant. Uh, no, thank you. I don't think <laughs> that's gonna be a, a, a crowd pleaser there. I, cleaning out uh, dog kennels. Uh, no, nah, I don't think so. Um, but hey, you know, some people love it. So, grocery store cashier. Mm, yeah, that wouldn't be too bad. Daycare assistant. Uh, hard pass. Uh, <laughs> I think that's fair to say. Concession stand worker. Now, we have a lot of experience as concession stand workers. Uh, we worked for many years at the Franklin Township Football League uh, in the concession stand while I was a board member there, and um, that was a lot of fun. So I uh, got that going on. Uh, that'd be a good one. Restaurant server, restaurant host, and hostess. These are kind of all the same things. Barista, uh, that works, you know, working at Starbucks, making coffee, places like that. Lifeguard sounds fun. Um, retail sales associate. Yeah, those are all kind of the same kind of thing, really. Camp counselor. Hmm, that could be fun. Uh, house cleaner. That pays well. Thirteen twenty an hour. Nate could clean. He, I've never, uh, I'm, he's not, um, hadn't been practicing his cleaning a lot at my house necessarily, but um, but that's all right. I'm not here to rip on Nate. He's a good dude. I'm just, uh, just an observation that uh, he'd need to practice his house cleaning a little bit. Uh, library assistant, eh, maybe. Landscape laborer. I think Nate would like that. Uh, dog walker. I think Nate would like that too. Hard pass babysitter. Uh, delivery driver. Yeah. Probably like that one. Tutor. Yeah. And web designer. I'm thinking web designer. You know what I mean? So, um, so anyways, there's a list of options for Nate to think about um, when he gets his uh, summer job here soon. So now let's see. These have been cooking a long, long time now. I'm afraid I'm just burning them up here. Let's see. Uh, I'll try a different one this time. Let me get that out of the way. Now that's cooked all the way. Yes, indeed. Now those those turned out real nice. Now you gotta let them cook long enough, though. I got a little hasty there at the beginning. Uh, yes. Yeah, so now, what I can do now is I can take this and when I'm over here working and I want a snack, I don't even have to even get up. I just pull this out from under the desk, fire it up, and dump some cake batter in it and uh, I'm all set I can go ahead and make some little mini cupcakes for breakfast so I'm going to unplug that so works as advertised I think what we need there and those are hot so you might want to be careful when you get them out but I think we want to put a little fudge icing on those all right make them really good and I think that you should go get one of these yourself or something similar. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. Now, the moment of truth. Got to try one of these out. Mm hmm. Very good. Yep, that would be go nice with a cup of coffee. I'm going to leave it right here by my desk. And every time I want a snack, I'll just fire it up and make a little. Batch of cupcakes. Mm mm mm. <laughs> I bet you could make pancakes in that, make big uh, pancake muffins and things like that. Might be worth a try. No. I hate to let these just go to waste. So while they're hot, I think I should probably have one more. But um. <laughs> All right, I don't need one more. All right, so our plaster is coming along. Now, I have, um, I was looking around, uh, cleaning up uh, my computer, actually. Um, cleaning up the files that are on my computer. And... Lo and behold, I found uh, some video clips I recorded a year ago, and it was about how to make ribs. 
and it was using my older camera, and uh, and um, I was dressed like a bum, and um, <laughs> whatever. Had all my goofy glasses, uh, big uh, uh, different glasses than I have on today, all that stuff. But I was like, you know what? Um, it may have some merit to uh, to use that video. So I thought, here's what I'll do. I will uh, take that video and um, clean it up and put it online. And one another reason for doing that is because uh, I want to just add a little extra time to the show to see if we can get this plaster to set up before we're done here today. So I'm going to go ahead, show you my video on how to make ribs. And, and like I said, uh, it's uh, it's from a year ago. It's uh, not using the greatest camera. It's uh, 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 the my attire that day was not uh, the, of the quality that it usually would be on the show. But anyways, um, I thought you know let's go for it. And uh, you maybe you learned something about how to make ribs. And um, and then while that's playing, I'll clean up here a minute and see if we can't get this plaster uh, to come out of its cast and see if we were successfully able to make our uh, candle holder. So. Without further ado, here's some information on how to make ribs. Well, darn, I was going to mow the yard today, but it looks like the weather's not going to cooperate. So I guess I'll just stay inside and make some nice oven ribs. All right, since the weather didn't cooperate, we're going to go ahead and make some ribs, which is probably more fun than mowing the yard. So today I have a strip of baby back ribs fresh from Aldi's and to make those we need essentially two ingredients and about three and a half hours of time. So what we need is some mustard which we're going to put on the ribs, rub it in and uh, use that as our glue to hold on the smoky dry rub. Um, there are a variety of rubs available, hmm, smells very good. And um, they all do about the same. I don't have a specific preference. So the thing is you don't want to put on too much. Very important to put on a, uh, enough but not too much. So we'll talk about that here in just a second. We'll go ahead and turn the camera around and show you the steps, which there are about three. So we're going to go ahead and um, pull the membrane off the back of the ribs. I'm going to cut it in two to make it a little more manageable in the oven. I'm going to wrap them in foil after I uh, apply some mustard in a rub and I'm going to cook them for about three and a half hours and then at the end we'll braise them, um, we'll cook them at, uh, we'll set the temperature in the oven to uh, braise and then we will, which is like 575 I think, and then we will uh, put some uh, Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce on them and, uh, and let that um, cook for about eight minutes and they'll be perfect. All right, here we go. I'm going to get something to put down for cutting these. And I'm going to go ahead and take the package, turn it over, and cut that open. And cut it open on this side. Cut it very carefully. Okay. There we go. Cut that right open. Pop those out. And I want to take just a quick moment to point out to you that we want to get, you can see that, we want to get uh, baby back ribs. Uh, if you get spare ribs, that's fine too, but that's a little different technique for cooking. Um, they're actually better in the sense that you get rib tips and you can do St. Louis cut and so on and so forth. But for just basic ribs, you want to make sure that you get baby back ribs. All right, those opened up. We're going to flip that over. And, one moment, all right, with those flipped over, this is a very important step. Take a butter knife, and we have to remove this membrane from the back. If you don't remove this, it'll make very chewy ribs. Um, it's not that uh, you can't eat them that way, and some people even like them chewy, but uh, not me. So, we'll stick our butter knife under there, kind of get it started. This is very slippery. What we'll do, you see that, grab that and pull it off. And yes, some may say that it's kind of gross, but this is a very important step. Got to get that off there or you will have chewy ribs and nobody wants to have chewy ribs. Okay. 
All right, with that membrane removed, you can go ahead and throw that in the trash can. All righty. Now, for mine, to make things a little more manageable, I'm going to cut it kind of in the middle. And you can feel the bones are right here. I'm going to kind of cut in between those bones. This is optional, depending upon your oven space. Okay, I'm going to set that aside right there. Looking very nice. Alrighty, I'm going to take these out of the way. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and set my oven to 275, so we don't have to cook these at a very high temperature. 275. I'm going to let that heat up while I get everything else prepared. I'm going to use heavy duty foil for each uh, rack of ribs. I'm going to pull this out. Okay. So I'm going to take my foil. I'm going to pull that out. Like that. I'm going to grab one rack of ribs. I want to do like that. Then I'm going to take the mustard. Adjust that cap a little bit. Oh no, I'm getting low on mustard. But we probably have enough for today. Alright, I'm going to rub that in on there, like that. And since I have some extra, I'm going to go ahead and rub it in on this one over here too, which we'll get back to that one in a minute. Okay. Do that. Just enough to kind of coat them. That's all you need. Alright, so I'm going to do that. All right, with those coated, I'm gonna go ahead and put my rub on those. Just a little bit like that. Just. Now some people might put more, but I like to go kind of conservative. I don't like to overdo it at all. Uh, if you do overdo it, you can really make some ribs that really aren't so great. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that, turn it over. We're gonna cook them with the bones down like that, okay? All right, so then now that I flipped that over, same thing. I'm going to put a little more mustard on that side. And then I'm going to rub that all in nice. Like that. Okay, then the same thing. We're going to take the rub, sprinkle that on. Maybe put just a little more on this side, but we would still want to be kind of conservative about it, in my opinion. Opinions do vary on this, but I say just a little bit because we're really going to hit it with the barbecue sauce at the end. So. There we go. Now we're going to take those. This first one here. I'm going to fold it up kind of like that. And like that. And we want it completely wrapped in foil. So I'm going to have to get just a little extra. There's some big ribs today. Alright. That one is ready to go. Now we're just going to repeat on the other one over here. Exact same thing. Wrap it up. And then we'll pop them in the oven. All right, there we go. We're going to pop those in the oven. We're going to cook those at 275 for between three and a half and four hours. So I'm going to go ahead and pop them in now. All right, here we go. No oven mitts when you pop them in, but you definitely want to have oven mitts when you pop them out. There we go. All right, we're going to give that about three and a half hours and we will come back, uh, pop those out, and see how they taste. In the meantime, I think I'll go work out and clean my house and my aquarium. All right, working out. All right, it's been about three and a half hours. The ribs are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and pull those out of the oven with my oven mitt. And what we're going to do is take those out of the foil. Uh, we're going to transfer those over to um, just a, a, a pan with foil on top. Um, and we are going to put the oven on broil, which I think I said uh, braising earlier, but uh, on broil. And um, once that heats up, we're going to coat the ribs with Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. And we put them in for eight minutes on broil, and it caramelizes the sauce, makes the ribs perfect. So let's go ahead and walk through those steps, and then it'll be time to eat. All right, here we are. Ribs are out of the oven. I'm going to go ahead and unwrap these. And we're going to scoop them out of the foil and just set them straight on the pan. Um, and then we're going to put the Sweet Baby Ray's on them and, uh, and let that caramelize on broil. So I'm going to go ahead and set my oven to broil. 
Got that started. All right, now these are very hot, but I'm gonna go ahead and carefully take the foil off. Okay. I'll open those up. They already smell delicious. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Very, very tender and delicious. Mm-mm-mm. All right, I'm gonna pull a little hunk off the end here and just make sure it tastes all right. Mm-mm-mm, very, very good. All right, to finish these off, we're gonna take some Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. We're gonna douse those real good. Okay. Just like that. I like to put on quite a bit at this point. All right, there we go. Get plenty of barbecue sauce on those. That will be perfect. We're going to go ahead and put those in for eight minutes on broil. And when we pull those out, that sauce will be caramelized and they will be ready to go. All right, there they are after being broiled at 525 for eight minutes. You can see that that caramelizes the sauce on top real good. Got the Sweet Baby Ray's there, and these are definitely fall off the bone tender without a doubt. So I'm going to see if I can just grab a little corner piece. You can see that just fell right off of there. And although it's a little bit hot, I'm going to go ahead and have a bite. Mm-mm-mm. Perfect. Delicious. And that's it. That's how you make ribs. Pretty easy. All right. I think I would describe that as found footage. <laughs> as in, I found that on an old SD card that I almost deleted. Uh, maybe I should have, but I thought, you know what? Make some ribs. Now, the thing with making ribs, uh, there's, there's, uh, everybody's an expert. But the thing is, that when it comes right down to it, uh, what I've found best is the no-frills approach. Um, whenever I try to do something fancy that doesn't turn out good. So the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to uh, cook them low and slow and a little bit of seasoning uh, stuck on it with some mustard. And then at the end, like I said, just, just put them in there and broil them with some uh, delicious Sweet Baby Ray's. Nice, simple. Don't get fancy. Uh, that's when things go off the rails. I... One time, uh, as some viewers may be aware, tried to get a little fancy with a lot of extra rub, and boy, they were uh, a little bit on the salty side. Uh, it, <laughs> so, anyways, um, all right, so uh, we're getting ready to wrap it up here, but I, I got my candle holder. Now, I don't know if it's fully set, but it is firm on, to the touch, so what we want to do here, if we get so lucky, is to take this and lay it out flat, right, and then try... Gently. <gasps> it's not quite set up yet. Ah, that stinks. Okay. Well, I wanted to demonstrate on the show what a beautiful candle holder we had. And it looks like... Let me try one thing here real quick. Nope, that ain't going to work either. It's just not set up all the way yet. Well, that stinks. But anyways, the idea is you pop this out. And uh, when you pop it out, you'd have a fully set up plaster candle holder. And, um, you know, I guess we'll just have to take a look at that in next week's show. Thought I'd give it a try, um, but that's okay. Um, I did have my, my beautiful plaster hand to show you, uh, to show you that this stuff does indeed work. This just had enough time to set up just yet. Um, so let that fully set up, and then we will revisit that and see what we got when we come back to next week's show. Anyways, uh, we'll get back to some more plaster of Paris next week. I'm going to do some casts. I'll do them a day or so ahead of the show so you can see how they turn out, and then on the show I'll demonstrate how I did it. So I'll film it in advance so that they're fully cured 100% so that we can see what the end result is. But um, but you get the idea. The hand worked, and so get some plaster of Paris, start making things, and uh, I would look forward to seeing what kind of creative items you can come up with. So anyways, have an awesome afternoon. I am um, off to put seat covers on in the Jeep. Um and need some new seat covers. I bought them at Aldi's, uh, the place you would definitely think that would be the place to go to for 
um, things for Jeep for seat covers. It totally makes sense. But they they had some really great looking ones and they were very inexpensive. So um, I'm gonna put on some seat covers and I'm gonna clean my house. Um, uh, it's definitely cleaning day and laundry day and aquarium cleaning day. So uh, some things never change. A year ago in that old video I found, I was talking about cleaning the aquarium. A year later, here I go again, ready to start cleaning the aquarium. But um, aquarium's a nice thing to have, so it's worth the trouble. Anyways, have an awesome afternoon, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.